Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing the first example of the third generation Rolex Deep Sea Sea Dweller that I have featured on this channel. New in subtle ways for 2022, the reference number changes to 136660. This is the Deep Sea D Blue variant inspired by James Cameron's 2012 descent to the bottom of the Challenger Deep, the deepest part of the ocean that inspires the imagery of the dial. So more on that in a moment. But let's talk about the changes through the years. The original Deep Sea came out in 2008. The Deep Sea Deep Blue with the modified dial came out in 2014. In 2018, Rolex redesigned the watch with a better match between bracelet width and lug size and diminished dimensions, particularly the end-to-end lug-to-lug and end-link-to-end link. So there were some aesthetic changes and some fit changes made in 2018, along with the addition of a subtly modified dial with a little Swiss made and crown between, plus a newer caliber 3235. The changes for 2022 are more subtle. So from the outside working in, we may as well start with a thinner bezel. The bezel and the insert are thinner. We now have a subtly chamfered faceted box section sapphire. We have modified loom, and I'll let you judge whether the difference is tangible when we do the loom shot. Then we have a date aperture and date numerals, 8% larger than before. We also have a deluxe version of glide lock in the class, but we no longer have the flip lock fold out dive extension. So let's talk about how it wears. Still 44 millimeters in diameter. It's still 17.8 millimeters thick. From lug to lug, it is 51.8 millimeters. If we include just the case, if we include the end links, the oyster bracelet, it is a substantial 53.6 millimeters end link to end link. And then there is a spacing of 22 millimeters between the lugs. I'll pop open this clasp and throw it on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. I would not have worn the original deep sea, but since 2018, I've been very pleased with the resized case and resized bracelet. This is now at the point where I could say, yes, if I'm not looking for absolute elegance, I could wear this on a daily basis. It's anchored, it's big, it fills out my wrist, but it doesn't feel awkward. I would wear this and enjoy it. Now you can see, we'll have to zoom out a little bit more even because it's such a big watch. You really need to see it in the context of the rest of my arm. I think if your wrist is my size, you can wear it just fine. Again, my wrist is 16 centimeters circumference oval across the top. It's not one though for a low cuff. This is gonna get hung up on almost any kind of sleeve. Rolex has its own foundry. It makes its own cases, clasps, bracelets. It makes its own alloys. It uses 904L stainless steel rather than the industry standard 316. This is more resistant to corrosion, particularly in the presence of salt, such as when exposing the watch to salt water or sweat. Also worth mentioning here, we do have a titanium case back. This has been renamed RLX Titanium. It now has a nomenclature on it for 2022 onward. Nothing changes there. This was the first titanium component on a Rolex watch before the arrival of the Deep Sea Challenge in late 2022. So we got a titanium case back there, and it's the lowest component of the ring lock system, which constitutes the case back an internal cylinder that is topped by this print. This is actually the top of the cylinder. And then there's an enormous multi-millimeter, five millimeter plus crystal on top of that cylinder. So basically what happens is all of this gets screwed together and then the pressure of the depth up to 3,900 meters helps to improve the hermeticity, cinching down the crown and compressing the ring lock system. Also worth mentioning that as a true dive watch, this is tested to 125% of the ostensible dive depth. So remember, it may say 3,900 meters, but you have to multiply that by 1.25 to get the actual limit as tested. Rolex uses equipment that is created by Comex to help test these things down to their rated depth. Taking a quick look at the buckle, we no longer have that flip lock system. What we do have is the deluxe version of glide lock that can be adjusted even when the clasp is closed and the watch is on the wrist. So this little lock opens up, collapses seamlessly in when you're ready to set the size, but you've got 10 
stops, two millimeter increments, so 10 increments up to a maximum adjustable range of 20 millimeters. Now we've got a spring-loaded beacon hook system. You can see how that works. It's a lift lock that latches down once, latches down twice, thanks to the clamshell. Rolling back to the case flanks, you can see Rolex case flanks are always high polish on these deep sea models. We got a trip lock crown and steel. We know that because it has three symmetrical dots, screw down crown, screwed in case back, obviously. The bezel is a wonderfully refined 120 click affair with sharp knurling that's easy to grip even with wet or sweaty hands. It's a real pleasure. It feels and sounds great and it has absolute refinement about its action. There's no grit in this bezel. Lights out, again, some changes to the loom, allegedly a little bit more. I'll let you be the judge. All three hands loomed. That should be mandatory on a dive watch. You should be able to tell the watch is running in the dark. And then, of course, you can see the luminescent pearl on the bezel, which on a Rolex watch is actually sapphire capped for durability. We've got that five plus millimeter crystal, which mercifully has no Cyclops eye magnifier due to the thickness, and then that's one of the reasons that the date window and date numerals were made larger to make them easier to see. The indices as well as the hands are white gold to resist tarnish or oxidation over time. You've got that inner metal cylinder on which the sapphire sits, and then you've got a lacquer dial that goes from blue to black, just as James Cameron in his deep sea challenge submersible went from the light of the surface to the dark of the Challenger Deep, and of course that little deep sea logo in signal green, which was the color of his submersible, which I'll actually find is that on these D-blues, the deep sea logo moves from 12 o'clock down to 6 o'clock and it changes color. Now the watch features a standard Rolex 3255, and, or 3235 I should say internally. The 3235 is the successor to the old 3135. The big changes are now power reserve 70 hours and the ball bearing is the means of pivoting the rotor. It's no longer a jeweled staff. There is a rotor bearing for better durability. So bi-directional winding, 70 hour power reserve, four hertz beat rate, 31 joules, chronometer certified. There's a stop seconds function. There's a quick set for the date. There's an overcoil hairspring that allows the watch to keep excellent time in any orientation with respect to gravity. During the chronometer test of the movement or Rolex's superlative chronometer test, of the watch itself, because the superlative chronometer test is a six position fully assembled watch test with the tolerances being no worse than plus two minus two seconds per 24 hours. And so the watch is able to pass that bar in addition to the 125% depth test before it leaves the factory. Also important to note, the movement has a full balance bridge with a free sprung balance for precision of adjustment and shock tolerance. And that Breguet overcoil hairspring features a neobium zirconium blue oxidized alloy called Parachrome Blue that makes the entire watch highly anti-magnetic. I suspect that every modern Rolex watch with that hairspring is in fact Milgauss or more in anti-magnetic terms. So reach out to Timasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of the latest Rolex Deep Sea Sea Dweller D-Blue model.